This is what you can expect before and after changing the settings from this video. We're starting in the graphic settings under the quality tab. And the first thing you want to do is make sure your render resolution is at 100 and the upscaling and sharpening setting is very important. Now there's two different settings you can choose from either Fidelity FX cast or AMD FSR. When comparing the two, you can see that Fidelity FX cast is getting less FPS than AMD FSR but Fidelity FX Cast is going to be a much sharper image and it's gonna make your visibility a lot better in comparison to AMD FSR. If you're on a higher end system, I would recommend using Fidelity FX Cast. I think the sharper image is going to be more beneficial in game so you can see enemies at longer distances much easier. Whereas with AMD FSR, it's gonna be a little more difficult to see those enemies. But if you're on a lower end system or you're just not getting the FPS you want, I would highly recommend using AMD FSR. And if you do choose to use AMD FSR, you're gonna click show more right here and make sure this is set to ultra quality. Any other settings that are not ultra quality here are gonna look absolutely terrible and are not even worth using in my opinion. And then if you do want to use Fidelity FX Cast here, you're gonna click show more and change this Fidelity FX Cast strength to 80. Now the strength here is controlling just how sharp your image gets. So if the game does look a little too sharp here with the set to 80, just turn it down a little bit. And if you want it to be even more sharper, you could turn this up more. Anti-aliasing is also very, very important here. Now, unfortunately we can't turn it off, which is what would provide us with the most benefit, but there is two different versions of anti-aliasing I would recommend. The first being SMAAT2X and setting the anti-aliasing quality to low, or you could set it to the filmic version of the same setting and change this to normal. Now, when we compare the two, there is a small difference in FPS. What you'll notice on the lower setting is that there's a lot more jagged edges everywhere and it looks a little more shimmery, like around the trees, you can kind of notice it here, which I know a lot of people don't like that look, but having your anti-aliasing set low is going to help visibility a lot, especially at longer ranges. Now, there is one downside to having this on the lowest setting. Looking here at this wall where you can see it the most is you get this film grain effect where it just kind of follows when you're moving around it it looks kind of gross and if you can't deal with that then don't put it on the lowest setting but for most of us i don't think that's going to be a big issue but if that's just something you can't stand make sure you have your anti-aliasing here set to the filmic smaat2x and anti-aliasing quality to normal everyone else i recommend putting anti-aliasing quality to low and it to the SMAAT2X setting here. Video memory scale, I turn this all the way up. Now, if you are experiencing a lot of stutters, try turning this down a little bit. And then texture resolution is another big one. I personally don't see a massive difference between even the very low and high settings here. And there actually isn't a huge amount of FPS difference as well. Now do keep in mind, I am on a 3090 here. So on lower end systems, the difference between very low and high is gonna be much more significant. So if you are on an older graphics card, it's where you're gonna really, really notice that difference in terms of FPS, but I would recommend using the very lowest setting because you get a lot of textures that will end up looking kind of smudgy almost like play-doh there's a good comparison here literally right in game that kind of shows that effect which is why i wouldn't recommend very low no matter what system you're on and i would recommend using normal you get the best of both worlds in terms of fps and image quality when putting this on normal but in the bottom right hand corner of the screen here you're going to see estimated vram usage and you're going to see it says max right here and there's a little bar now if this line goes above max, you're gonna notice that it turns red and you don't want that. So if that's happening, when you're putting texture resolution on normal, you're gonna have to turn it down to low or even very low until you get rid of that VRAM usage going all the way up over the max line. But the majority of you guys are not gonna have that problem and should be able to run normal perfectly fine. And then texture filter anisotropic, we have this on normal. And then nearby level of detail and distant level of detail, I have both of these set to high. Flutter draw distance, we want this set to short. Particle quality, we want this set to low. Particle quality level, we have set to very low. Bullet impacts and sprays, persistent damage layers, we have both of these turned on. Shader quality, we want this set to low. Tessellation turned off. 
and then scrolling down here to on-demand texture streaming you want this turned off otherwise the game is downloading textures in the background which could introduce a little bit of lag which we don't want streaming quality we have this set to normal volumetric quality we have set to low deferred physics quality and water caustics both set to off and then another important setting here is shadow map resolution. We have it set to normal, but here's some comparisons. Surprisingly, the FPS difference between these settings is very small, but there is a pretty big difference in terms of quality. When we're looking at the very low setting here, it looks pretty bad. When we compare it to the normal or high settings, these settings look a lot more sharp and just overall much better. And the difference in FPS is minimal at best. So I recommend everyone setting the shadow map resolution setting to normal. Then we're gonna turn off screen space shadows, spot shadow quality, we're setting to low, and spot cache is pretty important. I have this set to high. The reason I'm doing this is because this game is a stuttery mess. And one of the fixes for that is by setting spot cache to high. So if you're having trouble with stuttering in the game and you don't have this set to high, definitely try it out. If you have this set to a lower setting and you're not experiencing any sort of stutters in game whatsoever, then I would recommend leaving it as is. Particle lighting, we want on low. Ambient occlusion turned off screen space reflections off, static reflection quality low, weather grid volumes off. And then we have Nvidia reflex low latency turned on here. And then depth of field, motion blurs, we want all this off. The best way to explain motion blur is literally looking at the picture they provide here in game. As you can see with motion blur on, your visibility is going to be terrible because there's a blur effect that happens when you move around. Whereas when it's off, that does not happen. And that same thing with weapon motion blur, it instead adds the blur to your weapon weapon and that can hurt visibility we do not want that and then at the very bottom here we have film grain which we turn all the way down to zero we don't want any sort of film grain effect in our game moving on over to the view tab field of view is generally personal preference i prefer to play out 120 but anything over 100 is generally going to be good it really depends on your preference but what is very important is ads field of view now make sure you set this to affected and when we compare affected and independent you can see that I'm independent when I ADS, I am much more zoomed in and it makes the visual recoil much worse and harder to control. Whereas on affected, you're more zoomed out, which makes visual recoil much less and much easier to control. The only downside here is when you're using affected is obviously you're zoomed out further. So it might be a bit harder to spot enemies at distance. Weapon field of view here, we have set to wide. When we compare the wide and narrow setting, you can see that the weapon actually looks a lot bigger on the narrow setting which can affect visibility a little bit is this a big deal no but it is one of those small things and all the small things do add up and i changed vehicle field of view to wide for the exact same reason first person and third person camera movement here we want these both set to least when these are set all the way up your camera's shaking all over the place when you're running around and this minimizes that effect and i don't have any experience with the third person game mode so i cannot help you guys with those settings there unfortunately let's go over to the display settings now i always used to recommend you guys play in full screen mode because playing in full screen mode does technically give you guys the least amount of input lag possible but i've been playing on full screen borderless and i have noticed no difference and it's much nicer because i'm able to tab out and go th do things on my second monitor when i'm spectating because i'm always spectating because i suck but make sure dynamic resolution is off aspect ratio i just set this to automatic let the game do it itself and then v-sync for both gameplay and menus we you want this off i mean v-sync can help fix some of the screen tearing issues so if you are having some sort of screen tearing issues and it's really bothering you, you could turn this on, but it does introduce input lag and I do not recommend using those settings at all. And then custom frame rate limit here, I have this set to custom and then I click show more here and I up the gameplay custom frame rate limit all the way up to 300, which is basically making the gameplay frame rate limit unlimited because no one's getting 300 FPS. And then I set the menu custom frame rate limit to 120. So my game's not running at its max capabilities, just making my PC run super hot in the menus. But when I keep it at 120, it still does keep the menus kind of smooth. And then I change the out of focus custom frame rate limit to 60. That way when I'm tabbed out of the game and I'm spectating my friends, it doesn't look like a stuttery mess when it's set to 30, which is what I believe it is by default. And then scrolling down 
down here to display gamma, you're gonna wanna set this to 2.2. Now, if you are playing on a big screen TV for whatever reason, try setting this to 2.4, but the majority of you guys, you want this set to 2.2. Brightness here is pretty self-explanatory. Just click on it and make sure the middle logo here is just barely visible. And then high dynamic range or HDR, 99.9% .9 of you guys want this turned off. Now, if you are playing on one of those new fancy OLED monitors or you have a fancy OLED TV, then yes, turn this on and then make sure you turn HDR on in your display settings on Windows as well. But the majority of us, we do want this off. I actually do have one of those OLED monitors coming in soon, so I'm really excited to test all this out. But let's move on to the audio settings here. Now, home theater is the best audio setting in this game. Now, your master volume is you know, it's, it's gonna be your preference. I have it set down to 35, so I don't blow my eardrums out. And if you click show more here, turn your music volume all the way down to zero. Otherwise you're gonna hear that music when you're in the game and it's very distracting. It makes it much harder to pick up on noises like people reloading or footsteps, even though you probably won't hear it anyways in this game. And then dialogue volume, I turn this down to 50 so the operators aren't just screaming in my ear the whole time and being annoying. It puts them at a decent volume here, but then make sure effects is set to 100. That is probably the most important thing under here and voice chat volume. I mean, whatever works for you. And the most important setting under audio, well, probably not the most important setting, but a pretty important setting is reduced tinnitus sound. Now, you know that ringing effect when you get stunned or flash banged or whatever, when you turn this on, it gets rid of that. So you don't hear that super annoying sound. And that's just a really nice feature to have in the game. Now let's go over to the interface settings. Now there's a lot of important stuff down here. So if we scroll down to the HUD here, you're gonna see vertical and horizontal heads up display or your HUD bounds. Now, what you wanna do is turn this all the way down, especially if you're on on a bigger monitor. If you're on a smaller monitor, this isn't gonna be quite as important, but I'm on a 27 inch monitor and I'm sure a lot of you are as well. And what happens when you turn this down is that it squeezes your HUD closer to the center of your screen. So important information like your teammates, your mini map is all closer to the center of your screen and much easier to see. Whereas when it's at the default setting, which is all the way up, all that stuff is stretched out to the corners of your screen and it's not really quite in your peripheral vision and you're gonna miss a lot of things because of it. So just, you wanna put this to zero to get all that important information closer to the center of your screen. And some other important stuff here under the interface tab is telemetry. Now, if you set this to custom and then click show more, this is where you can enable your FPS counter. If you wanna see your server latency, packet loss, any of that stuff, it will go up into the top left-hand corner of your screen. So that is super nice. And then scrolling down a little further, you're gonna see skip introduction movie. Turn this on so you don't have to sit there and watch that every time you turn on the game. And then center dot is something I like to turn on. Even though there already is a center dot in the game, what this will do is you turn it on and you can set the center dot scale. So you can make a bigger center dot, which might make it easier for you to center shots and everything. So that's a super nice thing. And then when you scroll all the way up, I did forget to mention color customization here. Color customization is actually very, very important. Now we wanna set color filter to filter two and color filter target to both. And then we have the world color intensity and interface color intensity both set to 100. And that combined with the NVIDIA control panel settings I'm gonna give you guys makes the game look absolutely beautiful and helps your visibility significantly. Now, another important thing under here is if you scroll down here and you'll see neutral. Now changing this will change the colors of your pings because by default, the colors of your pings are white and your teammates pings are white. For some reason, everyone's pings are the same color in this game. Just having your pings all be white is kind of hard to see. So what you can do is change neutral here to something like pink, which is what I did. And it's gonna make your pings and your teammates pings a little bit easier to see. I mean, the pings are still gonna be a little difficult to see when we're comparing to Warzone 1, but this does help out a lot. Now, what you can do is after you set the color of your ping, click right here on the color again, and it's gonna bring this menu up. And then you wanna change the saturation and the brightness all the way up. That's just gonna make the pings even more visible. And then don't forget to click apply custom color right here. If you don't know how to open up your NVIDIA control panel, just right click your desktop and click on NVIDIA control panel. But once you're in there, 
there, click on adjust desktop color settings. And these color settings in combination with the color filters in game is what makes the game look absolutely incredible. So what you're going to want to do is change your contrast to 55%, your gamma to 1.15, and your digital vibrance to 80%. Now the digital vibrance is what is controlling the saturation. So everyone's monitors are different. So these settings might look a bit too vibrant on your monitor. And if that's the case, just turn down the digital vibrance a little bit. If you have a very, very dull monitor and 80% is still not colorful enough for you, Rank it up to 100. This is really going to be personal preference and what works best for you on your monitor. But this is a good starting point and I highly recommend you guys test them out. Now, the only problem with doing it this way is this affects your whole desktop. It's going to affect every game you play. It's going to affect if you're watching YouTube videos, everything's going to look like overblown and too saturated. So unfortunately, you have to change this every time you open the game. So when you're done with the game, just come turn digital vibrance to 50 percent here change gamma to just one and then change your contrast to 50 percent and do that every time you're done with the game now let's go over to the manage 3d settings because these are also very important as well i'm going to scroll through them all for you guys right here these are the settings i use and i recommend you guys try them out there's nothing crazy going on in here then we're going to find our way over to change resolution over here now this is very important make sure your refresh rate is set here because there's a lot of people who are playing at 60 hertz who have a high refresh rate monitor and they don't know so make sure your refresh rate is correct now if you do have a high refresh rate monitor and you're not seeing the high refresh rate options here you're only seeing 60 hertz or something like that you're most likely under an ultra hd tab here under resolution on the left i don't have the option anywhere so make sure you find where it says pc and then select your native resolution click apply and then you should be able to change to refresh rate so just be on the lookout for that and then close out of the nvidia control panel go to the search bar on the bottom left and type in game mode and you're going to see game mode settings pop up here and you're going to want to make sure game mode is turned on and then on the right side you're going to see it says graphic settings so click on that and you're going to want to turn on hardware accelerated gpu scheduling now in order for these changes to take effect you are going to have to reset your pc so make sure you do do that after this video now do keep in mind if you are a streamer and you're streaming on the same pc that you are gaming on you're going to want to leave this off otherwise it could cause some stuttering issues on your stream let's close out of that and then we're going to go back to our search bar and we are going to type in power and you're going to see power and sleep settings pop up here so click on it and then on the right side it's going to say additional power settings so click on that and it brings up this menu here and you want to change your performance mode to high performance and if you're not seeing it you might have to click this little drop down arrow and it might be under there but the most important part is that it's not on power saver mode that is the absolute worst thing to be on make sure you do subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest settings i do make these videos every time a new season comes out and sometimes i do update them mid-season so be on the lookout for those i really appreciate you guys watching i hope you guys enjoyed i hope this helped you out and i'll see you guys in the next video use the web peace